Good morning, everybody. Silas back once again. I'm back out here at the farm cleanup. Kind of got a late start today. I was up super late editing video, so I woke up a little bit late this morning. And then I had to go meet a guy and buy some catalytic converters. And then I had to start my truck and the loader at the other place and let those warm up for 30 minutes. Then I was able to unload my truck and trailer because they were clear full of stuff. Then I had to drive clear back into town to get fuel. And then I drove out here. I just got out here, started this equipment. Now I got to let it run for 30 minutes before I can use it. So it's been one thing after another, but we're here and we're going to get started. My dumpster over yonder is empty. So we're going to load it up. I got a little bit of small stuff still laying around. I got a few lawnmowers, push mowers up front, a couple of wheels and tires, just that type of odds and stuff. And I think there's one or two pieces left back there in the trees that we forgot about that we drug out yesterday before we left. So I'll gather that stuff up, throw it in there, and then I'll switch over to the loader. And I've got two of these big frames and I've got that big auger thing there. And I've got a piece of a frame up there and a, a fridge or a freezer over there, I mean. And oh, that, that yellow lawnmower over here. Got all that stuff. We'll get all of that pitched in that dumpster. I'm pretty sure it'll all fit. There's a little bit of junk over there yet beside the loader. So odds and stuff will gather up, get that dumpster filled. That's the main goal for today. That way I'll be done with all the scrap at this location. Then all I have left is this old equipment like this and that cart over there, I'm gonna keep it. Then I've got that wagon back there. Or I guess it's a trailer, I shouldn't say wagon. It's no good, it's just scrap, but it's an empty box and there's a bunch of stuff I'm keeping. I figured I can load up in that and take home. A car back there in the trees. Then I got these two tractors right here. And then I've got just odds and this stuff laying around. I've got that three bottom plow. If there's room left over in the dumpster, it's going in the dumpster, otherwise I'll take it home. I can't remember who it was that was wanting those three bottom plows, but oh well. I had another person wanting them, but the problem is, is that with this thing here, if I haul that home, oh, let me back up a little bit. If I scrap that, there is about $200 worth of scrap right there. Just for me to throw it in the dumpster and be done, it's $200. Whereas if I take it home, my truck, without overdrive, I got to take the back roads. So I've got, you know... 40 minutes here, 40 minutes home, plus the time to load it and unload it. So I'll have hour and a half to two hours in it. So that's another couple hundred dollars worth of my time. So just to break even and make the same amount as what I would make to throw it in the dumpster, I'd have to get $400 out of it. Now, if I want to make anything extra, I'd have to charge more. So really, for me to sell this thing, I'd have to get $600 out of it. And nobody in their right mind is going to pay $600 for a non-working three-bottom plow. So really, I'm hoping I can just find room to get it in the dumpster. I may pull that iron wheel off of it if I get rambunctious. If I don't, that's okay. All the time people ask me how I pay for this stuff, how much we make off of these jobs like this and that sort of stuff. And I don't like to talk about numbers just because when you mention numbers, some people get upset. And so I don't, they don't understand the concept that we have to pay a boatload in taxes. We pay property taxes, income taxes, inventory taxes, just tons of taxes. Then we have to pay for equipment, maintenance on the equipment, that sort of stuff. So yeah, we might be doubling our money, but we have to in order to stay in business. And some people think that you should operate on a super thin profit margin and the real world just doesn't work like that. So I try to avoid exact numbers, but basically the way we work a job like this, this particular job here is we didn't know how much stuff was here. So we kind of told them an upfront price on the cars. And then we said everything else, we would just weigh it. And then we would, we deduct the cost of the dumpsters and we pay them half. And so they get half of the profit and then we take our half and that's what we pay for our fuel, my wages, employee wages, that sort of stuff out of that. And everything left over is the profit for the business. Some of the other jobs we've done in the past, like the place that had all the big air compressors, that was the last cleanup I did. We just went in there, it was easy to see what was there. So we just told the guy a price up front, bought it all, paid him for it and just hauled it all home. And that's the way we do a lot of these jobs. That job I did earlier in the year that had all the Buke Skylarks and international trucks, same thing, we just kind of went in there and said, we'll give you X amount for everything here. And we agreed on a number and we just paid them. And we usually pay a half or a third up front, depending on the price. And then another piece halfway through, and then the rest at the end. This is all just random odds and ends stuff we're gonna keep. A couple old iron wheels, a neat looking basket, another iron wheel, radiator, light, some sort of mesh door off of something, some old toys and buckets, an old keg, old hay claw and an old sink some stove pieces another bucket and then I think there's a little bit of stuff over here by these trees we're keeping as well 
it's not a whole lot it'll all fit in that trailer no problem and then i've got those two big rolls of wire and all that sheet tin out back yet and that what i think i'll do there is i'll take the rolls of wire those will fit in this trailer yet and then i'll set the, all the tin on my trailer and then i'll set the trailer on top of the tin that way it'll hold it all down and i'm thinking i can hang the tongue over the front of my tongue on my trailer and i'll have enough room at the back of the trailer yet to maybe get those old horse drawn equipment or something behind it but we'll worry about that later they decided to go ahead and let us go through these buildings anything we want to grab out of here i don't know this is the one that just has wood in it so there's a little bit of metal in here we'll grab but all the wood stays but i think the other two have a bunch of metal in those so we'll clean those out here today or at least most of it anyway all right we'll see what's in this building here got to dig the door out to be able to get in that pump's gonna stay with the farm There we go. First look. Looks like we got good chicken feeders. Looks like a couple good pieces and then the rest of this is all just scrap in here. We were digging through there and found these. I think there's some sort of chicken carrier or something. The floors are gone, but found those and we found these. I kind of like the color on those. A couple old carburetors. Nothing really super valuable, but I don't want to scrap it either. So we'll take it home. Maybe I'll scrap it later, or maybe I'll find somebody else that wants it. Talk about a fright. Can't really see them in there now. Yeah, it went down in there behind that stuff, but I was in there working over there on that side, and a skunk walked right up next to me. I mean, literally up against my leg. I came flying out of there. It's over here inside of that stuff now somewhere. I know you're almost done in there too. We've been working in here for 45 minutes and haven't seen it until just now. Well, we didn't quite get that other building done. There's a little bit more back in the corner, but I'm not messing with the skunk over a hundred pounds of iron. But we're gonna get in here now. The only thing in here I really wanna keep probably is maybe this old uh, Corn King and possibly this bright yellow ironing board. It's kinda neat. There might be a few other goods goodies in here somewhere. We'll just kinda go through it and get out the scrap. So we're digging through here, finding all sorts of neat old, really old stuff, trinkets and whatnot. Ruby. But I found this in here. Seagrass Garage from Abbeville, Kansas, phone number 101. Tells you when your oil change is due and it has a little calendar on it. March of 1933. That's crazy. And you just pin it up in your car. That's in really good condition still for its age. Just all sorts of neat old stuff in here. Old hardware pieces. So we'll kind of dig through this little stuff. This is kind of neat here. Someone made this little cup thing out of a coconut shell. Hard telling what we'll find in this little area. And I think we're about done on this one. All these chemicals in here. These are old chemicals. So these are the ones in here that give you cancer and make you drop over dead. So it's starting to stink in here. I'm done messing with this building. I don't really see any other good stuff. Just a bunch of things clear for it bolts and screws and nails and that sort of stuff so we're done on this one i think we're about done cleaning stuff out so now we're going to go back to loading up the big stuff out back in the iron box finish filling the iron box and then i'll throw one of those tractors on my trailer we'll head out but we found a little bit of good stuff in this one not a whole lot nothing super valuable but once again i just don't want to see it go to the scrap <laughs>
Well, that dumpster is full. There is no more room in this one. It ought to be fairly heavy. That one building was just clear full of heavy, heavy stuff. Generators and starters. There's a few of those. And then there's a whole bunch of just coffee cans clear full of bolts. And I forget. Oh, there's a whole bunch of crankshafts and pistons and that sort of stuff in there. So there's quite a bit of weight in that one. And then the other ones had a bunch of just tin and stuff like that. And I packed all that big stuff up on top. I managed to get one of the big frames in there. The other one I couldn't quite make in there. And I still had, they decided to let that yellow trailer go. I had the big long auger piece, that three bottom plow, the lawnmower. So I just loaded all that up on my truck and trailer. I'll get this all chained down, put some straps and chains on it. And I'll haul that one in today. I have no clue where I put my hat. I don't know where it's at out here. I know I took it off so I can put the GoPro hat on and now I don't know where I put it. So I'm trying to find it, but oh well. I bought a hundred of them, so I still have a handful left. You guys bought quite a few, but I still have some left. Found a few goodies down here in the scrap. They were laying over there beside the garage and back in the weeds and back in the trees. This chair here is kind of neat. Needs a lot of work, but it's neat. Found that old McCormick piece. I'm thinking it's off a of road grader. Don't really know. This old Mazda tailgate's got really good color. I wish it wasn't Mazda. But it does have really good red and white color, so somebody will buy it just for the color. And then this old funky table thing here was back in there. That make a really cool industrial coffee table. And there's a bunch of casters in that bucket over there. Old antique things that somebody will use for something. But then I threw a couple of aluminum wheels on there. And I'm going to run this on into the shredder and drop it off. And that will be the last of the scrap out of this place. Other than that dumpster that's full, but they'll pick it up either tonight or tomorrow night. Well, my dad's been busy at shipping a lot of cars in. Since I've been doing this farm cleanup, he's been shipping a bunch of cars. There's a mountain of them over there. I never did get that iron wheel off of there. But, oh well. pile over here. It's been a while since I've been here. Bonk. I almost saved that yellow trailer, but I'm just not in the saving mood right now. I'm in the get it done mood so I can get back to the yard and get crushing. Same thing with this mower. I almost saved it too. I figured somebody might buy it for parts. Uh, I just don't feel like dealing with that right now. So that's a heavy mower. It's worth quite a bit for scrap. That's the way it goes. has the keys in the ignition on the steering column. I couldn't get it out though. On the road again. On the road back out to the farm cleanup. All I'm going to be doing today is hauling cars, but check out this old-timey church, old-time country church, out in the middle of nowhere. Fairview United Methodist, I believe that one is. The reason why there's churches out in the middle of nowhere like that is there actually used to be a lot more, but you'd have farmers scattered all around the area, so they'd choose a central location, and that way everybody would have a church that they could all travel to within reasonable distance on Sunday.
so I had the great idea of taking a different route home. I'm kind of regretting this decision now. <laughs> this road is not exactly what I would call a road. I'm just trying to keep the truck moving without getting stuck. That's my biggest worry now. But I think we'll be okay. Some of these roads out here in Kansas use the term road very loosely. This is more like a path. And there goes a deer right in front of me. I actually caught him on camera for once in my life. Two bucks and a doe. Bumpy old road. Okay, here's the test. This is pretty loose sand right here. We'll see if we make it. Oh, it slowed down pretty good, but we made it. This is definitely, definitely a bad idea. Got a tree branch hanging across the road, but I can't stop because I'll get stuck, so hoping it doesn't tear nothing up. I missed it. Cows are all checking me out, saying, what's this fool doing? There's an old, old, old box car. Old wooden box car, that's pretty cool. Don't see that very often. People always say, I can't believe there's that much stuff out there still but I have driven by about six farms like this. I'm way in with this load so far within about three miles and every single one of these has a bunch of the old farm equipment. Now theirs looks like they're still using it pretty much, but in another 10, 15 years, they probably won't be using it anymore. It'll probably be outdated and broken by then. So then it'll be more scrap. Looks like an old truck. I got distracted there for a second, but there's an old truck back there. It looks like a junk truck parked beside it. But here's another farm. Usually every mile section has another farm, and usually every farm has at least a little bit of scrap around it, plus an old barn. Here's an old abandoned farm right here. What's left of a barn and a windmill back in the trees. I guarantee you there's probably a little bit of scrap around there yet. What do we got down here? It looks like we got more deer running across the road. We just, I love it out here. You just never know what you're going to see. I didn't get my camera out in time, but just back behind me back there was a farm with an old barn, clear full of antique trucks. The barn's falling, the roof is falling in on them, and I'm sure they're just going to be wind up getting sold for scrap here at some point in time in the future. You just never know when that's going to be, though. They might call us in a year or two, and then we'll be out there cleaning that one up. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. But here's another farm. Can't really see through the trees on the camera very good. But back up in there, there's just tons of farm equipment and tractors and just stuff parked in the trees. So that's why I say there is so much of this stuff out there. It's just unbelievable how much scrap is still out there on these farms. I've only driven about five miles and I've already seen probably three, four hundred tons of scrap. Well, happy days. That's great. I was getting close back to town and all of a sudden, I started feeling a weird vibration, but I was almost here, so I just kept going. I made it here, and it looks like my fan blade came apart. You can't really see it, but it, it ripped right at that rivet, right there in the center of the screen. Every single one of them did. And now these blades flex really easy. I get my hand in here. They flex really easy. And while I was driving it, they were flexing, and they rubbed my radiator all the way around. If I can get that sunlight to stop doing that on the screen, there we go. You can see down at the bottom of my radiator, it completely ruined it. And it's just dumping antifreeze everywhere. So today turned into a, probably going to cost me somewhere around uh, $600 to $1,000 to fix this. I can't imagine what one of these big copper radiators costs. Okay, new game plan. Game plan now is, is I got to get all my camera gear and tools out of the truck so we can get it into the shop. I'm going to be out of town part of next week anyway, so I guess... While I'm out of town, hopefully the shop can get it fixed. Looked it up, a new radiator is about $500. A fan and a fan clutch is about $200. And then with labor and all that, so I'm looking at probably somewhere around the neighborhood of, you know, twelve dollars to $1,500 to get this thing up and going again. So, Merry Christmas to me. I'm going to have to go ahead and unhook all this stuff here and get it off my trailer. That way I can unhook the trailer because there's no way that jack is going to hold this tractor for that long of a period of time. It probably would, honestly. I mean, weight-wise, it'd be fine, but I'm just scared about that sinking in the ground. Or I might be able to find something to put underneath that, but I don't have anywhere to go right now anyway, so I might as well do something productive. Well, my truck had a bunch of other little issues too, so I just took it to the mechanic and dropped it off, and I'll just get everything fixed on it. So my dad ran out here 
I rode with him, and you know, I'm gonna load this truck up on him. And then Sean ran out too, so I'm gonna stack as much as I can on his truck and on his trailer. And hopefully we can get it all in one load on him. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that though, because I got that big trailer over here that's full of all that good stuff. So we'll see. I did leave my tripod in my truck though, so I won't be able to actually set up the camera and film loading this time. So I'll film it after we're done. I think we're gonna get it. We're kind of stacking it on there a little bit haphazard, but it's either this or leave it behind. So I think we're gonna get it all on there. Got that tractor and a few pieces of farm equipment on my dad's truck. We got that trailer full of goodies and some other stuff from Sean's truck. All this tin and these rolls of wire will have to slip in somewhere. There is that piece of pipe left over there, but I've got to drive the loader over to the other farm tomorrow. So I'll just take it over to the next place. We can just squeeze these on there and then I've got a couple more little tiny things out back that we can squeeze on here just about anywhere. Where there's a will, there's a way. Just that last little piece there. I do have that pipe over there, like I said though. I'll just carry it to the next one with the loader. It's only a mile down the road. But it's all on there. I don't know how we'll get it unloaded, but we'll figure it out. Well, we made it out here. Nothing fell off. Got pretty much everything unloaded off my dad's truck now. Just taking this tractor out back. Put it in line with the other tractors. And then Sean's gonna pull up and we're gonna get his trailer unloaded. A couple of people caught me here with scrap vehicles. Wasn't really planning on buying any scrap today, but it is what it is. They caught me here, so I'll go ahead and buy them. There is just a ton of cool stuff in there. Check these things out. This is a bunch of odds and ends trinkets that we found in there. But these here, I can't figure out what they are. If you know what these are, let me know. They say different things on them. Like there's Bass Forte, Echo Horn, eight feet, Celeste, eight feet, Treble Forte, Viola, four feet, just different ones. There's just a handful of them in here. I have no clue what those go to. So if you know what those go to, let me know in the comments. Put all sorts of good odds and trinkets in here. What I want to do with this is, is when I get the skid steer back here in a couple weeks, is I want to move that tub that's clear full of good stuff in there further. And then I can take this trailer here and just shove it right in the door. That way it's all covered up, won't get rained in. One or two rains won't hurt this stuff any. I mean, it's already been sitting in leaky buildings for the last 50 years. So I'm not too worried about it getting it done right away. But I can't quite get that tub in the building any further with the loader. I can't quite, I can get the tires through there width wise, but height wise, I can't fit. So that's the furthest I can get that in there. So once I get the skidster in here, I can rearrange that in there a little bit, then shove this on in. Last thing I'm gonna do for today is Sean actually came to town to pick this thing up, and I conned him into helping me bring that last loader junk back. But he's here to pick this up. This sold here a while back. The guy's gonna turn it into a display. I kind of talked about that in the previous vlog. So he cut a grill out of a different truck. And he's gonna take this truck home and work on it and make that front end look better, put the wheel, put a grill in it and that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna load it up on his trailer now and that way he can head out. Yeah, with some fresh tires and a little bit of body work on that truck, boy, it'll look good as a yard ornament. Sean hauled this car back for me yesterday. He just drug it off on this tree right here. So I'm gonna grab it, take it out back, and then I'm done for the day. There she goes. That's the end of this one, guys. I'm done for the day. It's starting to get late. I'm tired. I haven't eaten today, so I'm a little bit hungry. That's been the story of my life here the last couple weeks. Is I eat dinner and that's about it. I'm gonna head back out there in the morning and I'm gonna drive the loader over to the next cleanup and I'll do a little bit of work there tomorrow and then the next day is Christmas Eve, so I won't be doing anything for a few days after that. By the time you see this though, Christmas will have already passed by quite a bit. I'm releasing these videos kind of steadily every other day because there's gonna be a period of time where I don't have anything to film because I'll be out of town. And so that way you guys don't just have a big gap kind of just stage these ones that i'm filming now out a little bit i hope you guys enjoyed it 
hopefully my truck's going again by the time I start filming again. Got lots more exciting stuff to clean up at this next farm, and then who knows what we're going to be doing next, so keep checking back. I'll let y'all go with that. I hope you have a fantastic day, and remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.